Welcome everyone, I'm Zsófia Bognár. I am a doctoral student at the Department of Ethology of Ötvöslorán University in Hungary. My doctoral topic is the connection between head shape and behavior in dogs. In this research, we examine the dog's propensity to form eye contact with humans with my co-authors Enikő Kubinyi, Dura Szabó and Alexandra Dej. The research is based on the growing popularity of short-headed breeds worldwide. In Australia, the average head length of the population steadily shortened. That is, the proportion of short-headed dogs is increasing. A similar trend can be observed in England. The most striking uh, is the increase in the popularity of French Bulldog since 2011. In 2011, less than 3,000 individuals were registered, while it was 55,000 last year. Also in America, the French Bulldog is the second most popular breed, but among the most popular breeds, there are the English Bulldog, the Boxer, the Cavalier King Church Spaniel, the Boston Terrier and the Pack too. In addition to dogs, this trend can also be observed in rabbits and cats. So it seems that the popularity of short-headedness is growing worldwide and affects several species of companion animals. The popularity is growing despite the fact that shortening the skull is associated with serious health problems. Shortening of the skull results in, for example, the brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, the brachycephalic ocular syndrome, but many other diseases are more common in short-headed animals too. Their life expectancy at birth is also shorter, while the life expectancy of the also popular Labrador Retriever and English Cocker Spaniel is over 11, it is around 7 in the case of the Pug and English Bulldog. The shortest life expectancy belongs to the most popular short-headed dogs, the French Bulldogs. In their case, it is only 4-5 years. The general question of our research was that what can their owners like about short-headed dogs? So what can cause their steady increase in popularity? When choosing a breed, the health and life expectancy of the dog are less important for those who prefer a short-headed breed and the appearance and the behavior are more important. We assume that forming eye contact with humans could be a desired behavior trait because it increases the effectiveness of communication and training, strengthens bonding between the dog and the owner, and makes dogs who make eye contact, and eye contact generally cuter. But why did we think that the head shape could be related to the eye contact? Let's look at the anatomy of their eyes. So the distribution of retinal ganglion cells is not the same in dogs with different head shapes. These cells are responsible uh, for processing the visual information that comes into the eye. In long-headed dogs, these cells form a horizontally aligned visual streak, meaning that they can see a panoramic-like uh, image, while in short-headed dogs, cell density is higher in the center of the visual field and lower at the periphery. Uh, this results in a vision similar to a human in terms of sharpness, uh, meaning that these dogs see sharper in the center of the visual field. The distribution of cells varies on a continuum of the head shape. We assume that uh, because of the anatomy of their eyes, short-headed dogs may be able to focus their attention better on their communication partner, because they are less, di less disturbed by other stimuli coming from the periphery. It has been observed in previous research that short-headed dogs follow more successfully the pointing than uh, long-headed dogs when they have to choose between two pots to find a hidden food. And in our previous research we also observed that short-headed dogs look longer to the projected dog and human portraits than their longer-headed counterparts. Thus, we assume that shorter-headed dogs are more likely to form eye contact with humans. That is, more scientifically, uh, their cephalic index and the quickness of forming eye contact are positively correlated. The cephalic index is the metric of the head shape. A ratio of the maximum width of the head multiplied by 100 divided by the maximum length of the head. 
This index can be measured from proper, properly taken photos. You can also see an example of how to calculate this. Also on the right side, I have drawn some examples of how to imagine the value of the cephalic index. The shorter, more under the shape of the dog's head, the higher its cephalic index value will be. The study involved uh, 125 dogs. The eye contact establishment test began with the experimenter throwing a piece of sausage on the ground and then waiting motionless for the dog to establish eye contact with her. When that was done, she threw in another piece of sausage and the test lasted until 15 eye contacts or uh, for a maximum of 5 minutes. We measured the latency between eating the food until forming the next eye contact. We observed that shorter-headed dogs made eye contact faster with the unfamiliar human. Here on the x-axis uh, you can see the time from uh, eating the food until forming the next eye contact. On the y-axis the ratio of dogs that form eye contact at uh, a given time. So for example at uh, 15 seconds 75% of uh, longer-headed uh, dogs typically made eye contact while at the same time uh, it was 90% uh, of uh, shorter-headed dogs who made eye contact. We did not group the dogs uh, by head shape. We analyzed the cephalic index uh, as a continuous variable, but uh, the sample had to be divided into three groups for visualization purposes. It is visible that dogs with a higher cephalic index form eye contact faster than those with a lower cephalic index. So, we can accept our assumption. The cephalic index and quickness of forming eye contact were positively correlated. This may be due to the anatomy of their eyes, meaning that shorter-headed dogs have better visual acuity in the center of the visual field uh, and uh, lower at the periphery, allowing them to focus their attention better on their communication partner. And in addition, Short-headed dogs carry the features of the baby scheme, such as big heads, big eyes, high foreheads, and this trigger increased care from people. Thus, people may pay more attention toward short-headed dogs and are more likely to engage in mutual gaze with them. Therefore, these dogs may have more opportunity to learn to engage with humans and form eye contact with them. But both explanations can be true at the same time, and I think this is the most likely. So, short-headed dogs have an increased propensity to form eye contact with humans. It can also result in increased communication skills because these dogs may pay more attention to humans and humans' communicative behavior. Due to the increased attention, they may be easier to train. More frequent eye contact establishment strengthens bonding between the dog and the owner, so the relationship with a dog prone to form eye contact may be stronger. And forming eye contact can result in a cuter and more appealing appearance. Thus, directly or indirectly, the propensity of short-headed dogs to form eye contact may contribute to their growing popularity. I would like to thank to the dog owner pairs for their participation in this research and thank you for your attention. If you would like to read the original uh, publication or are interested in what else we have observed about the propensity of dogs to form eye contact, you can access the article by scanning the QR code. Thanks again for your attention and bye!